my god, we made it. We made it. Hey, Omar. Oh my god, we made it.
And the IND no, actually shares the R. Yo, it's the R62. Oh. Yo, oh, yeah, the yo, where, yo, where do you see the R62? It's it's in between those R142s and R142s A's. I think we're near the last stop. Yay! Yeah. I think we are. Bro, it's been an hour. <laughs> that was mad fast. And what time is it? They're Why probably do we have a red signal? Oh, boo! Hold oh, on. red signals. Probably because we're near the last stop. Probably. Come on, abracadabra, turn into a green signal. Uh, no. Hey, what do you want to get something to eat? I'm kind of What do you got to eat? Bro, bro, bro. like, um, where? Look at that. It's another rail. Where? Right in between those two rails, bro. Okay. Oh. So bumpy. So rocky. This is Bedford Park Boulevard. Oh yeah, we're almost. We're actually almost at Woodlawn. First time at Woodlawn. Yay! So this is the first time you what you're going to Woodlawn, right? Yes. It's like the 80th time for me. Oh wow. No seriously. Wow. Yay, Bedford. This was such a short ride. I can, Yo. my phone can easily fit all of this footage. I'm just gonna press all this footage into one big. Video. Hey, where does that track go? Yard. Oh. Yo, it's our. Yo, I. <laughs> Yo, yard, 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 yard. yard. Yo, that looks like a 
like a red bird right there. Red bird? Where, 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 All the way over there. Giggity where? <laughs> oh, red bird, red bird. Yo, yo we're trained. Red yo, red yo, red bird. Red bird, red bird, red bird. Right there, right there. Alright, this is a way right better view. Way better. Yo, red bird. What's it called? Let's go, red bird. Red bird, red bird, red bird. Let's go. Red bird and more trains. So many red bird and what I like to call yellow bird. So many. Yo, look at that. Yo, look at the stick on it. Did I just say graffiti? I just said graffiti. Yo, why is it yellow? Yellow. Yo, look at that R65. R65? Where? R65. Right behind that roof right now. It has like a weird door on the back. I can't see. Oh, that. Oh, I see it. It's like a corrugated, it's like a, corrugated metal. It's like a R62, but we're combined. <laughs> so many R62s and R62 wigs. Uh, did I just say R62? I meant to say R68. It's okay, bro. It's okay. Thank God that didn't shatter right there. Yeah. Like it's like we are tilted. This car is literally tilted. Alright, my phone died and now I have the portable with me and now, now I can go back to recording. Join us on one of our theme tours. We slowly head on yes, down sir. this way. Woodlawn was founded in 1863. And it was created because at that time there was no Brooklyn Bridge. And it was very difficult for people to get to Greenwood in Brooklyn. Ferry across the river and then folks drawing carts to the cemetery. Whereas with the opening of the New York Central Railroad and its station at Woodlawn, the cemetery, our cemetery was only 30 minutes away from Manhattan by train. That's how we sold it. Our first now, when you have a new business, 
one of the things that you want to do to get yourself known is to get a VIP person involved with your business. And our cemetery was no different. Our first VIP burial was in 1870 with the first admiral of the U.S. Navy and the hero of the Battle of New Orleans. Anybody want to take a guess? Admiral Farragut was the first VIP burial. Well, we're actually going to go past his uh, gravesite in the trolley. Are you going to yeah. talk about this? I'm going to talk about uh, uh, well, the first mausoleum I'd like, like, to, like to take a look at out the left side of the cemetery. Coming up on that of F.W. Woolworth the five and ten cent store magnet. As you, as you look at his mausoleum, you can see that it is Egyptian themed. This mausoleum was constructed in the early 20th century. And at that time, and I'll let Anthony jump in if he wants to, this was the height of um, Egyptian what was, what was what were this called, Anthony? This type of uh, structure, according to the Love Father, it's the second Egyptian revival. Egyptian revival. That was I was trying to think. Of. You can see that the sphinxes, well, sphinxes are normally shown as male. These sphinxes obviously are female, and there's a whole bunch of Egyptian uh, symbolism on this uh, mausoleum. F.W. is in here, and also his granddaughter, the poor little rich girl, she's also there. This small mausoleum on your left, Mark B. Head, does not indicate how the person died. This is Bertha Head. And if any of you are from Brooklyn, you know that there's a Bertha Head Park and Bertha Head School. This is the this is the B Head who was Bertha Head, oh. after whom the pool and the park were named. That's the I'm, I'm sorry. Not Bertha. Yes. the mausoleum of James Bailey of Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey, the circus impresario. and Isidore Strauss. Isidore Strauss was the president of, of, of Abraham and Strauss department stores and also, also the president of Macy's. They, he and his wife, wife drowned in the sinking of the Titanic. His body was recovered. Hers never was. 
He was originally buried in a Jewish cemetery in Brooklyn. But then in the 1930s, his three sons uh, create or worked with an architect, James Campbell Rogers, to create this triple mausoleum. Uh, as you can see, it's a U-shaped mausoleum, one, one uh, section for each of the three sons. They buried their father in front under this boat, which is kind of quirky for someone who died in a shipwreck. But that is an Egyptian funeral barge. So their father was moved from the Jewish cemetery to this cemetery, and the three sons and each of their families are, are also buried here. By the way, if anybody has any questions, either Anthony or I will do our best to answer them. Coming up on your right is the mausoleum of Celia Cruz, the Queen of Salsa. She and her husband, Pedro, are buried here. It was always her wish to um, return to Cuba, but unfortunately, uh, the Castros outlived her, so she and Pedro are here. This is one of the most visited mausoleums in the cemetery. Uh, the family has placed a lot of memorabilia. There are two sarcophaguses inside, one for uh, Celia, one for Pedro. And the family changes out memorabilia, photographs, and whatnot. And so uh, there are large uh, plain glass windows on the side so that people can um, uh, see what's inside. cemeteries like ours, of course, are limited as to how much land we have. So what most of these historic cemeteries have done in recent years is create something called uh, community mausoleums, which I like to think of as apartment houses for the dead. A lot of people, for one reason or another, choose not to be put in the ground, but want to be buried or entombed above ground but they don't want to spend the millions of dollars that would be required to build a family mausoleum, like some of the ones we looked at on our way over here. So these community maus mausoleum, bleh, community mausoleums have been constructed. We have several of them, about 13 of them here in the cemetery. And up on the hill there is the newest one, the Knollwood, uh, or I'm sorry, the Hillcrest Community Mausoleum. And the one that we just passed is the Knollwood Community Mausoleum. And as I say, there are about 13 of these scattered throughout the cemetery. And, and it gives people that, who do not want to be placed in the ground, but do not want to be cremated, uh, uh, an, option, an option to be entombed above ground. stone with flag in front of it is the grave of Fiorello LaGuardia, who many consider to be New York City's finest mayor. We have seven mayors entombed here at, at, at Woodlawn, and surprisingly enough, only one of them uh, mentions that he was mayor of New York on his tombstone. Six of them, including LaGuardia, 
do not mention that. The only thing on his tombstone, as you can see, is statesman and a little flower at the top because that is what Fiorillo means in Italian. On your left here, this is the Hillcrest plot. This is the most recent plot that was opened for in-ground burials. It was opened in 2002. And as you can see, it's rapidly filling up. the section of the cemetery that is called that is referred to as the jazz corner because a large number of, of jazz musicians jazz greats chose to be buried here the reason for that is the first jazz great who was buried here was Duke Ellington you'll we'll see his grave site in just a moment but uh, and he was he was buried in 1974 and all of the jazz greats then wanted to be buried close to the Duke. So we have any number of them in this general area. Mm -hmm. And it's, as I say, it's called, become called the Jazz Corner. Uh, we stopped at this first one here. This interesting uh, gravestone on your left hand side is the tomb of, of George Ween and his wife. They were the founders of the Newport Jazz Festival. George lived to a ripe old age. He just died recently. I think he was in his mid-90s. Is that right, Anthony? I don't know. Yeah, I think he was in his mid-90s. 1925. So that would be about 97, I guess. Yeah, about 97 years old. His wife, Joyce, had died earlier, and now they're both buried here. A little further up to Maxwell. The next of our jazz greats here is the drummer Max Roach. Interesting quote at the bottom of his tombstone there. Also on the left, up on the top of the hill, you see that rhomboid type tombstone, black granite there. That's Jackie McLean. This is the grave of Illinois Chiquette, I guess clarinetist. I'm sorry, uh, saxophone. I mentioned. See the grave. <clears throat> Excuse me. See the grave of Miles Davis. Why don't we? Wow. You want to open the door? Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. If you'd like to stretch your legs and and take the grave site of of Duke Ellington and his family. Those two big crosses there under the tree. They say he was the first jazz great. Also, a little further down that way is uh, the grave of Lionel Hampton, the famous uh, vibraphonist.
Irving Berlin and his family. Very simple, flat ledger stones, nothing fancy, but that is Irving Berlin and his family. state senators were elected by the state legislatures. However, Senator Clark, being a multimillionaire, essentially bought the Montana state legislature to make him a senator. It was so outrageous that the Senate refused to see him. So he did it again. Eventually he got on um, the Senate. But because of that, we passed the, I believe it's the 17th Amendment, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, the 17th Amendment to the Constitution, which now uh, allowed for the direct election of United States Senators. It's no longer the purview of the state legislatures. And we can thank Senator Clark for that. For those of you who may remember, you get Clark, the, the, the fabulously wealthy woman who, who lived in, in Beth Israel Hospital, even though she had homes all over the world, that was Senator Clark's daughter, who lived to the age of 102 and was buried in the mausoleum a few years ago. Side, this interesting tomb. It's, it's half mausoleum, half sarcophagus. Um, this is the this is the tomb of, of Foster, who made his fortune in the 19th century. And the way it happened was, if a lady went out in public in the 19th century, she never went out without wearing gloves. Long gloves that came up almost to the elbow. Foster invented what were called Foster's fasteners. These were snaps for ladies' gloves and it made him <laughs> a large fortune. On the other side, on the right hand side, that beautiful angel and Anthony if you want to jump in on this one feel free um, who did who was the art who was the sculptor Daniel Chester French was the sculptor who also sculpted the seated Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial this is the this is 
this is the grave of, of um, oh, Anthony, help me out here. I'm having a little Kinsley, who, in, who was the, he was a, the chef at the uh, Holland House Hotel, and he, he published a book called A Thousand Uses for a Chafing Dish. If any of you have a chafing dish, you certainly want to have that book on here. consists of a broken mass with a, with a bunch of uh, navy items surrounding it. In, 19, in 2011, his grave site was, was uh, honored as a National Historic Landmark, as you can see the, the plaque there. The cemetery itself is a National Historic Landmark, so we have the distinction of having one National Historic Landmark within another National Historic Landmark. The, this large circular plot was donated by the cemetery to Admiral Farragut's wife to have him buried here. 
the funeral, funeral procession included uh, President Ulysses S. Grant. when it wasn't really understood. So she used to bake special bread for him. And his pediatrician was so impressed by, by that that he asked her to bake bread for a number of his patients, and that was the beginning of Pepperidge Farm. center uh, at that memorial there you remember when we were at the Strauss mausoleum I mentioned that Isidore Strauss was the pres president of Macy's that is the grave of R.H. Macy the founder of Macy's oh wow Van Buren's eldest son and his wife Angelica Singleton Van Buren. This is important because Martin Van Buren was our eighth president and when he was elected president he was a widower. His wife had already died. So his daughter-in-law Angelica Singleton who is buried here in the, in the second grave over actually functioned as first lady for his four years in the White House. Now, they weren't called first ladies in those days. They were called White House hostesses. But Angelica Singleton, who was quite a beauty, beauty. if you look her up on, on, on Google, you'll see portraits of her. She's quite a striking beauty. She was Martin Van Buren's, as I say, his daughter-in-law, and she served as hostess for the four years that he was president. 
So Abraham and Angelica are buried here in front, and their three sons are buried on the other side of the cross in this little island plot. Yeah. Um, That is the grave of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, the famous suffragette. We have a number of suffragettes buried here at, at Woodlawn. And I mention this because New York State gave women the right to vote in 1917, three years before the 20th Amendment to the Constitution gave women the right to vote nationwide. So we were, we were ahead of the curve on that one. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, unfortunately, did not live long enough to cast a vote, but she was one of the one of the uh, pioneer suffragettes. And just recently, a statue of her and two other uh, prominent women was unveiled in Central Park. You may have read about that. Belmont and his wife Alva Vanderbilt Belmont 
Alva was another leading suffragette. She was initially married to William K. Vanderbilt, divorced him at a time when divorce was really frowned upon in the, in the Gilded Age. Speaking of which, have any, any of you watched the Gilded Age miniseries on, on, on TV? It's, re it, it, it's really well worthwhile, but anyway. Uh, she was, as I say, a, a leading suffragette, and at her death in 1933, uh, she was also president, president, uh, president of the uh, organization that today is known as NOW, the National Organization of Women. And at her death, members of the organization were lined up, double file in front of the mausoleum here, as her, as her body was brought into the tomb. That tomb is a copy of the Chapel of Saint-Hubert in Amois, France. It's uh, about a 96% copy, slightly smaller than the original, but it's got uh, wonderful carvings, uh, and, and we invite you to come on one of our theme tours where we open some of these mausoleums, and this is this is one that we always open. It's open now, uh, and uh, uh, it's really a beautiful, beautiful mausoleum. Well, thank you for riding our trolley. We're getting back just in time for the second tour. If you haven't had lunch yet, you can take the tables that are available, or if you want to take another tour. This is the top of Woodward. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got your forehead. Alright, my camera's out and recording. No, oh, I am higher than you. I'm gonna. Hey, bro, remember that time I got 77 77? Wait. Wait, 77 50. 77 51. 52 and then 53, 54, and 55. The top of it, the top of it is rusty. I just heard, I just heard a horn. You know, me too. I just heard a horn. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr.
can go kind of fast. That was not as bumpy. That was not as rocky. At least 30 miles an hour. Let's see. We should be able to. You won't invite me when I go to maximum overdrive. Hey ya! Hey ya! I'm glad we're friends. Me too, bro. Are you guys actually friends? Yes, it's a friend. Best friends. I mean, we're both, we both are real fans. We both have YouTube channels. So we're best friends. Yeah. Best train friends ever. Yeah. Train up ahead. Will it be our R142 or our R142A? Uh, judging by the looks of it, it is a... I think it's 142 or 142B. No, R142. No, only 142 and 142A exists. Yeah, There's also 142S. No, I'm against R142A. I'm against 142. I'm gonna guess R43. 43. 43. R43. They're the newest fleet. R143 is only operating on the yellow. Oh, oh, on the yellow. Yeah. It only operates on the yellow. Thank you for calling it the yellow instead of the NQRW. R142A, I was right. Yay. I said R142. Also what? A. Right. No, we're going mad fast. Hey, yo! Hey! 
All right, we're stopping for the game. I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what's so annoying right now? What? Since I'm, I don't have a phone yet. I'm too young. I'm borrowing my mom's phone. Anyways, she's making me um stop the video and get a new one. Make a new one every five minutes. Gala Yankees. Sort of Yankees. Yankees. Yeah. Let's go Yankees. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, go Yankees. Yankees. Let's, go. let's go Yankees. Let's go. Let's go Yankees. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, hey. Let's go Yankees. Let's go. Let's go Yankees. Why does that look? Yeah, even though my dad's from Houston, I'm neutral. That sounds like the whistle at a rainbow crossing. I'm neutral doing Yankee. Hey, bro, hey, bro, hey, 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 yo. Oh, up? look, they're at the parking lot. What's up, boys? What up, boys? What up, people? Um, oh, no way. I was about to say Red Sea. Yo, yo, they're actually having a game. They're having a game. Look. Hey, hey, yo, hey, yo. Yo, why is the Yankee train not here? Someone's making a signal to blow the whistle. <laughs> Someone go faster. <laughs> Hey, bro, they got a game hey, going on. Hey, that's old Lion's mom you're talking about. Hey, bro, this is song I actually saw. Does he? Mama got that bunch of crunch cake. Does he? Mama got that bunch of crunch cake. Mama got that bunch of crunch cake. Mama got that bunch of crunch cake. Yo, do the Yankees have a game every day? I don't know, bro. Hey, look, people. Hey, look, right. Hey, people, people. But
There is a train approaching the station. Not in service. Please stand away from the platform. Yeah, let me type my name. Let me type my name. Yo, there is so okay. many. I'm just writing down you guys' names so that I remember them. There are so many police officers. I thought they were going to be on the train for safety. Like one police officer per train. Hey, train. Do any of you guys have like any fantasies of what you'd like to see in the subway? What? Like, do any of you? What's your ear? Just type it in. Oh, red signal. Boom, you saw. Never mind, it is not a red signal. No, it's a red signal. You just took a picture. I, I don't know how I, I just think I sounded like a red signal. Bro, you have the flash on. Turn your flash off. Now you gotta delete those videos. Dude, turn your flash off. Turn your flash off. Man, turn your goofy old flashlight. Dude, turn your flash off. Yo, I wanna be operating an LOV in the 1930s right now. Yo, me too. That'd be so sick. Hey, you are 142 next to us. I actually know what I want my after. Hey, I just realized, maybe that was the train that we were having a debate with, you guys, were you? Hey, hey. That is what I want my Chester bound five train. The next stop is no, West it's Farm Square, no. East Tremont. It's, Wait, let me try. It's this is in East Chester. The one Fire Avenue. Avenue. Four train. The next stop is your mom Burnside Avenue. Avenue. Your mom Can Avenue. I try? What the fuck? This is a Brooklyn College. Hey. Wait, it's my turn to try. It's my Wait, turn where to are try. you? Do it. Well, you this is in East Chester. Guy Avenue Five local train. The next stop is. <gasps> East, 180th Street. Oh man, we're going slow. Is it just, would you agree with me that what I did was very, very good? I did I'm going to stop recording all here and wait until we get to um, 86 or something to record. I'm going to just stop recording because we're stopping. <laughs>